Good day, everyone, and welcome to our Pro Training Technical Webinar featuring Ted Worcester from Into Care. Before we start, I'd like to review a few items so you know how to participate in today's event. Here's a quick review of what you'll see on your screen. To the left is the viewer where you see the presentation. To the right is a control panel where you can ask questions. The control panel will collapse automatically when not in use. To keep it open, click the View menu and uncheck the Auto Hide control panel. You have joined this webinar in listen-only mode, which means you are muted. You will have the opportunity to submit text questions by typing your questions into the questions pane of the control panel. You may send in your questions at any time during the presentation and we'll address them during the Q&A session at the end. Later today, you will receive a follow-up email containing the webinar recording. With that, I'll turn it over to Viserys' Director of Marketing, Andrew Asir, to get us started. Thanks, Chris. Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you. Technical webinar uh, featuring Into Care. Ted Worcester is gonna be presenting to you guys some, some fantastic information about uh, the Into Care unit. Uh, and just a little bit about Ted. Um, he has been the sales director uh, for the U.S. at Into Care since 2017. He graduated from California Polytechnic University with a specialization in pest management. His career encompasses a vast experience in pest control in the public and private sectors. First a pest control technician in 1977, Ted became a specialist and a trainer years later. Before working at Into Care, he had several positions as a sales rep, district manager, marketing manager, international marketing manager, EPA regulatory manager at Univar Solutions, now Viserys. So it is our pleasure to uh, have you join us, Ted. We're looking forward to uh, this time with you and learning more about the Into Care unit. Thank you. Well, thank you. I appreciate it, Andrew. And uh, thank you all for joining. I know that you're busy or going to start getting busy because the season's just about on on several of us. So Appreciate your time on this and appreciate Viserys for this opportunity. So with that, let's go ahead and get started uh, to optimize your time. Uh, this is just the uh, the first slide is just kind of showing what, what today is. It's the Viserys Pro Training. And again, thank you for joining. So to get to get right into it, um, Into Care is a mosquito control device that controls two different types of mosquitoes. The first one is the 80s mosquitoes, 80s aegypti and 80s albopictus. And those, those mosquitoes um, are really kind of the, the, what we call the, uh, uh, the day biters, it, the, the, the very aggressive ones, kind of black, black and white markings, which you'll see. And they're through kind of more of the southern part of the country. Uh, they, in, the, the second mosquito species that we, uh, we control is the Culex. We started out with the 80s species, but now we control the Culex species. And the Culex species are pretty much across the country. The Culex pipiens is in the, the northern house mosquitoes and the Quinquipasiitis is the, the southern house mosquito. But Into Care works for both mosquitoes, but it started out with just the label for the 80s mosquitoes, but now it has a label for both 80s and Culex mosquitoes. And a little bit about the mosquitoes themselves. Is not turning now, there we go. Uh, oop, now it's going, it's a, there's a delay, I apologize. A little bit about the mosquitoes themselves. This is not working correctly. The okay, let's talk about the mosquitoes themselves. The uh, the slides are not working; they're delayed and they're not working very well at this point. We tried this and and, and it worked better earlier. Um, the 80s mosquitoes is again the day biter mosquitoes, and a couple of things that you want to remember about the 80s: they don't fly very far. They'll fly up to 150 yards, but really not much past the, the, uh, the 150. In fact, generally they only fly about 30 to 40 yards on there. So the, the 80s mosquito is a, a kind of a close one. It's evolved to be around us. It lays its eggs in fresher water, places around our house, which could be after a rain or after sprinklers or something like this. They, uh, they evolved to be in small pockets of water, as little as two teaspoons. As long as it's there for a few days, they can go through a life cycle on there. Whereas the Culex evolved to be into larger, a little bit dirtier waters, but it can also breed around the house too in the same locations as the, uh, the, uh, the 80s mosquitoes. 
the Culex mosquitoes fly a lot further. So those can come from a couple of miles away from a pond or from a dirty pool or something like this. But into care, the ones that breed are close to the house, it will control either mosquitoes. The slide that you're hopefully seeing now is all the places around the house that these mosquitoes can, can breed in. And that would be uh, from a wheelbarrow to a cap, bottle cap, a tin can, a, a toy, uh, leaky faucet, gutters. There's a lot of different places around the house, especially if they have a sprinkler system that these mosquitoes can develop on. So uh, just it's not just the areas that you can see, it's the areas that you can't see and can't get to. And this is where IntuCare really shines. It's able to take care of the, uh, the mosquitoes in all those breeding spots on there. So um, around the house, and if you think about it, there's breeding spots that the neighbors or a green belt or something else has, and the into care can control the mosquitoes there too before they come over and be pesky mosquitoes for your customers. So not only controlling on the house, but also what's around the house too. So there is a, a lot of, 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 of area that one, one single station will, will control. So let's hopefully this, this advances correctly now. Yes, it does. Into Care's advanced technology, auto dissemination, the reason Into Care works is the auto dissemination feature and the static charge transfer of two active ingredients. Meaning the auto dissemination, we use the female mosquito to transfer the active ingredients. We get enough of her honor that she can transfer active ingredients to all those breeding spots that you can't get to in and around the yard. So it's more than just a trap. And we, put, we quit calling it a trap because we don't trap the female mosquito and we want her to, to disseminate all that active ingredient to all those other spots in and around the yard. So it's an auto dissemination device and the static charge on the gauze that they land on inside the station will get enough active ingredient on her to be able to do that. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to get enough active of two active ingredients on her to do that. And this is kind of a, a, a sample of what it looks like on there. The, uh, to the left is kind of how the into care works. Once a female mosquito goes into the station, 100% of their eggs, with, without exception, will die, will, will become larvae, and will not become biting adults. So all they're going to kill, but, but most stations will kill most of the, uh, the mosquito larvae that if she goes in that particular station. But what mosquito the into care does is it allows her to, to leave, and now she's she's infecting all those other spots that you can't get to or you you that are that are out there. So she can affect those areas and at the same time after she affects those areas then she dies so it's really kind of a really neat process that works extremely effective and a lot of pmps are already using this uh, throughout the country successfully as opposed to using just a standard trap which is on the right most traps will kill the adult on the larva side no matter what trap you're using but they will not take the uh, the active ingredient out anywhere else and again that's how mosquito works so hopefully this, uh, we've tried tested the video, so let's, let's take a look at the video and, and let's see if it uh, works correctly. The into care station targets mosquitoes that are ready to lay their eggs. The odor lure attracts 80 and Q-Lex mosquitoes, which can transmit Zika, Dengue, Chikungunya, and West Nile virus. Attracted by the smelly water, the mosquito enters the station and searches a spot to settle near the water surface. The gauze on the floater is an ideal location for the insect to land. She uses the gauze to rest while laying her eggs in the water. Unknowingly, she contaminates the water with particles from the gauze. These particles were transferred to her skin when making contact with her legs and body. The gauze has a special coating that uses polarity to bind mosquito-killing powders. The positive charge of the insect makes the particles transfer to her skin. Her body is contaminated with two different actives, one that slowly kills the mosquito and one that kills her larvae. After a few days, the eggs laid in the station hatch and become larvae. These larvae produce a smell that will attract more mosquitoes to lay eggs in the station, thereby enhancing its effectiveness. The larva side in the water kills the larvae just before they are ready to pupate. The dead pupae sink to the bottom and are eaten by younger larvae. If the station contains many mosquito larvae, then this shows that it is working well. 
Unfortunately, none of these larvae will ever become adults by the mosquito. They will all be killed by the larvicide. After laying a batch of eggs, the now contaminated mosquito flies out of the station. She goes and searches for another location to lay more eggs. Rainwater in an old tire provides a nice spot to breathe. When she contacts the water, the larvicide on her legs dissolves and contaminates the breeding site. This cycle is repeated when the mosquito continues to search other places to lay her eggs. At every stop, she contaminates the water with larvicide. Even the very small quantities that are transferred can effectively kill all larvae. In this way, she kills her own offspring, as well as offspring from other mosquitoes that use the same breeding site. With this technique, we control mosquito breeding in and around the station, even in sites that may be small and hard to find by pest control personnel. One station effectively covers an area of 400 square meters, which is 4,300 square feet. The larvicide is not the only bioactive in the station. The second agent is an insect killing fungus. Its spores attach to the mosquito skin upon contact with the gauze. This fungus is a safe biological active that does not infect humans or pets. The spores use germination tubes to penetrate the insect skin. Once inside the mosquito, the fungus produces blastospores that excrete toxins. This infection makes the mosquito less active and reduces its ability to bite humans. It also inhibits the development of viruses in the mosquito gut. A fungus infected mosquito can therefore still spread larvicide around the station but cannot transmit disease. After a few days, the mosquito succumbs to the fungus infection and dies. This video is really, really good if you were to use this to, if you do an inspection and you show the homeowner because this, by viewing this video, the light bulb goes off on the homeowner. One, it's a greener product. Two, how it works and, and how effective it can be on there. So. Uh, many, many PMPs use this as a sales tool, and we'll, we'll be able to brand this for you, and we'll talk about that later. But this is a really good video to use when you're talking about into care uh, with a customer and selling into care to your, your homeowner. Uh, just to recap, uh, lures of females to the station, spatial specially designed, the size opening, the smell of the water, the color that's being put in the shade. It's a great place uh, the, the, for the female mosquito lay eggs, so she easily finds a station. And once she gets in there, she picks up the biocides, and then she flies out to lay more eggs. And while she's laying eggs, she's getting sick from the second active ingredient. It's slowly killing her and keeping her from biting. So we have the advantage of her going out, spreading the active ingredients, the pyroproxima, the growth regulator. At the same time, the adulticide, the, bio, the uh, Bavaria bassiana, it's a fungus that you're familiar with. It's, 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 it's in ascend uh, for bed bugs, apprehend, excuse me, apprehend for bed bugs. Uh, so it's just, it's a, an ingredient that you've already used, you're you're familiar with and already using. So she contaminates those breeding sites, and then the mosquito dies within a few days on there. So it's more than just a trap. It's a uh, it's a mosquito control station or system. <clears throat> and this is the active. This is how it works. She lands in the gauze. She gets a positive charge by flapping her wings. She gets a high positive charge when she lands in the gauze. That negatively charged particle that's now was on the gauze jumps on her and you can see the picture to the right she has a lot of dust on her much more than you need to control the the alert the breeding and a lot other sites or to uh, to slowly kill her so the powder transfer her transfers to her and then she takes it to the other side and we call this the uh, the into care in insect tech uh, technology and and these this is kind of typical what happens on there I like this slide because on the red, it shows 100% kill, and that's without exception. We've never had one come out, a, a biting adult coming out of the, uh, the station itself. On the, the, the to right is something like a bromeliad or a vase where you've got other pockets of water that you may not be able to spray or the homeowner gets water in right after you leave, so on and so forth. So it controls about 90% of the, uh, the breeding in, in the bromeliad that keeps 90%, uh, kills 90% of the larvae there and kills all 90, about 95% in the vase in this particular case. And you can see the locations that we tested on the right. This is 
typically what a spray pattern looks like. In this case, this was done in Manatee County. And in Manatee County, they had the uh, a section of homeowners on the north that used nothing but into care on the kind of the, the green, blue, uh, the uh, north part of the picture, the top part of the picture. On the bottom, the red part is where, I'm oh, sorry, in the, in, the, in the blue part, we had the spray and the bottom we had into care on there. So the spray pattern, when they measured the mosquitoes, how many mosquitoes they were trapping, you can see on the right. On the bottom a graph on the right, from week 14 to week 38, you can see right about week 20, they started, uh, the mosquito season started. They, they got warm enough, they got some rain. So by week 22, they had to do a spray on there, the blue line you can see. They had almost 60, 60 mosquitoes trapped in one station, so they had to do a spray to knock them back down. So in week 23, it was low on the blue. It came back up because there's eggs out there still and they had to spray it. So this is a pattern they do through all through the season. This is typical spray pattern. In this case, it was permethrin. And the bottom, they used uh, just the into care, nothing else. And the into care, you can see the, uh, the mosquito population starting to go up on 20, but by 21, the into care had already started controlling them. So it was already starting to reduce that population and keeping those mosquitoes from coming out. So you can see that red line throughout the season, it kept the population lower, in fact, lower than, than kind of a complaint level. In fact, the people in that, in that neighborhood on the south, the red neighborhood on, on Manatee County, they said, whatever you did this year, please do it again next year because it's the fewest mosquitoes we've ever seen. And that's how mosquito, that's how into care works. And this, this, this graph here shows when to apply or the best time to apply um, into care. It's always okay to put into care out in the middle of the season to start it up. But if you put it in the middle of the season when the mosquitoes are already out and breeding, then you're going to need to um, be cognizant that, this, that into care is going to take about two to three weeks to start working. So let's go through this graph real quick. The black line is really kind of the typical spray pattern on there. And this was a pyrethroid that was done here. In March, they the uh, they there were into care was put out and that was sprayed. So we did a comparison on there, and into care brought the population down to a nice low level, where the spray pattern went up and down on there, depending on which you sprayed and how often you sprayed. The dotted green one is if you put it out a little early. In this case, it was put out right before February 1st to get ahead of the season, and you kept the population through the entire season down to a lower level throughout the whole season. So getting into care out early avoids that two to three week delay because you're getting ahead of the season, but it also keeps the population lower because the population never gets to the point where it's laying eggs and other, other areas, that kind of stuff throughout the season. So getting into care out early is the best way to go on there. Into care can be used in homes, hotels, swimming pools, restaurants, retirement homes, near schools, uh, you name it, it's, it's, got a, it's, a, it's got a very good tox pack, it's very, very, very high LD50 on the active ingredients, so it can be used almost anywhere you want. It doesn't hurt dogs, bees, butterflies, koi fish, all that, so it's, it's a very, very safe product to use in a lot of different areas. Um, summary of benefits to a PMP is it, you can grow your business, it's a cost effective, and I'm gonna talk about cost effectiveness here in just a few minutes but it's a very cost-effective product. Um, we'll go show you three business models coming up kind of that most PMPs have used or some combination of these business models. It's green, sustainable, safe. It improves conventional treatments. Um, you can use it with or without chemicals. We'll talk about that in a minute, which chemicals and how you might want to use that. And it's good, but it can also be used as standalone. In many cases, probably about 15 to 20% of the use of into care is just using into care and servicing every four or six or so four to six weeks or so um, it can be uh, and it controls single resident locations or areas much larger in fact the larger the area that you can use into care the more broad the stations will work you can get a bigger area and use less stations to get, get very good control and we've seen that over and over again three kind of basic service models i talked about the first one uh, that was uh, the green economic model. Um, uh, that's just using into care, and we'll talk about kind of the general cost uh, structure of that. Um, if the customer, you can get ahead of the season, or the customer's willing to wait two to three weeks, and a lot of people who want green, and more and more people want that, 
will do that. So if you wait two or three weeks, you can get really start really getting good results on there, depending on the situation. So about 15 to 20 percent of the stations going out are used this manner. Most stations are used in the integrated service. Probably two thirds of the uh, the uh, the stations that we have going that are out are used in this manner, to where someone will do an initial spray to knock down the population. Then as the population comes back, into care starts taking a hold and keeping the population low for the majority of the season. And why we say two to three times per year you may want to spray would be no matter what you're doing or what, what you use for whether it's another trap, whether it's a trap, or whether it's spraying, whatever, after a heavy rain, especially after a drought, you're going to have some of those eggs waiting for moisture to come out. So you'll have what I call a mosquito bloom. Once that happens, within a week, you probably want to do some kind of touch-up spray, no matter what you're using, if that's the case, depending on the part of the country. But in a lot of the rest of the country, you can do the initial spray, put into care out, and into care, in many cases, will take care of the situation all season long. And then there's the full premium to where if the customer wants a little bit better results, you're spraying, you're getting decent results, they want a little bit better results, uh, that pull down that population even further, you can put into care out with it and do a kind of a normal monthly or six every six week type spray and, uh, and, and you can work, use, use into care to do that too but you obviously you have to charge for that because you're doubling up your cost not only to uh, spray but the time it takes to set up a station <clears throat> customers will be happy to know that into care reduces environmental impact and only spreads bio size to mosquito breeding sites it doesn't necessarily unnecessarily spread chemicals across the yard like other methods. So there's no dry time or waiting or potential liability because a dog licked the leaves or kids got out too early, whatever it is on there. So there's really no liability uh, to, to speak of with the N2 care station. Uh, minimizes the amount of active ingredients used. You're only using a half a gram per station. And it reduces the exposure to other insects, bees, butterflies, lacewings, ladybugs. You'll kind of see that see the, the difference on there because you're not knocking those down and you don't have to worry about flowering plants or spraying flowering plants and, and getting bee kills, things like that with into care. It eliminates the risk of chemical dress drifts and trespasses. Um, you don't you don't have to wait till the wind is almost completely still to do a pre, uh, to a uh, to do a fog, especially if you're doing a fog. You can put into care out any anytime, even in the rain. You can put into care out and it's just fine on there um, and uh, you, you don't have to worry about the spray going from yard to yard or the odor with you know the the, the liability potential that, that might be happening with when customers or, or non-customers smell what you've done in the yard or see what you've done in the yard um, it's made from recycled materials and it and actually um, mosquitoes a lot of people don't know this but mosquitoes are, are a major um, spreader of dog heartworm and into care helps reduce the uh, the chance of that because people love their pets and they want to protect their pets. In a lot of cases, and we've got several companies doing this and, and advertising in this this fact. It's bringing nature back to the customer's yard. Into care has no effect on the bees, butterflies, etc. And PMPs have noticed, and homeowners have noticed, the return of the natural ecosystem of the yard once they stop spraying or reduce their spraying. The things that are normally in the yard are coming back to the yard, and and, and especially folks that uh, want to have kind of a uh, want to want to see more of a greener product or a green application, uh, they want to see this. There's no wait time while pesticide dries, like I said, and no noisy applications. It may be managing customer expectations, um, like I said, if 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 the only managing is if you're only using into care alone, that two to three week wait period because you're killing the next generation. And then uh, station placement and density is important when you do it this way. But we have a lot of experience. If you want to try and do this, depending on the situation, we can coach you through it. Or you can just try it on your own yard if you'd like and try it and not spray. And you'll see how into care works. It works pretty well. Uh, the only thing you want to be careful with into care and any, any mosquito control uh, uh, s system or device that you're using is you want to be aware of large bodies of water. Into care. Um, will not, you can't build up the pyroproxen. Pyroproxen works as low as eight to 10 parts per billion with a B. So it works extremely low, and that's why you're able to get the pyroproxen spread, get enough of it on the mosquito, the female mosquito. She lays the eggs and she spreads enough in the water to get it to above eight parts per billion. 
and then you're controlling the the, the larvae in those other places the, the nut tree knot hole the gutter whatever wherever you're at on there but you can't get enough you can't get eight to ten parts per billion of, of pyroproxifen the growth regulator in the in a, in a large body of water so a uh, large body of water you just can't have enough mosquitoes visited to do that so a large body of water and, and if you spray uh, a yard or if you're doing a misting barrier you're still going to have to worry about culex coming out of that large body of water so a good barrier is your best um, uh, your best uh, uh, defense against mosquitoes coming off a, a dirty pool or a pond or something like that that, that may need to be taken care of or in this case viserys has very good uh, chemicals to be able, if you can legally do it, to uh, to uh, treat that water, whether it be neutral uh, uh, to a growth regulator like a methylprene or a BTI, um, uh, Viserys has uh, several options that you can use for those large bodies of water. And you can combine it with current treatment on there. The uh, um, like we talked about the uh, the option two on there, the, the business model two potential. Like I said, there's a variation to all this stuff, but you can use the into care with sprays. What you want to do is you generally, if you're going to do a spray, mist first, and then set the into care stations out, or if you've got stations already out, cover them. But even even in, even you may not even have to do that depending on the chemical you use. If you're using a repellent like a uh, pyrethrin or a, um, a, a, a permethrin or um, you know eco 2 vo great product but it's a repellent so you want to make sure you cover the stations or do that first because you don't want to get it on the station and then make the station where you want the mosquito to go to make that station repellent but you can use something like a, a suspend polyzone works great uh, one guard demand there's several good pyrethroids and micro caps out there. There's a micro cap bifenthrin that works extremely well with it too. And you can use regular bifenthrin with it too. Regular bifenthrin can can knock down the population for about two to three weeks, and that gives into care time to start doing its thing. So regular bifenthrin is an inexpensive way to go, and it's a very effective way to use into care also. Or you can use the uh, the micro cap bifenthrin. There's a lot of options as long as you kind of stay away from the very highly uh, repellent. Uh, options such as garlic oil, permethrin, things like this. And this this is really where into care shines. Uh, I love this slide because this is this is actually Austin, Texas, and the the middle picture is the customer's yard, and in that yard um, they were the paying customer. They were having mosquitoes, but you can see there's a whole lot, not a whole lot of mosquito um, that, that that are happening in that particular yard. So. Um, we looked around, there was a little bit in the gutter, I think, and, 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 uh, but they were the paying customer. On the right, so when you put into care out, be aware it's gonna control, not just in your customer yards, but around your customer yards and a lot of different areas before they come. In this case, the customer, this was the neighbor, the picture on the right. So I looked over the fence, or we looked over the fence and we saw all these breeding spots in the neighbor's yard. And that's where the mosquitoes were coming from. So what we did is the picture on the left, we moved one of the stations, we added another station, kept them in the shade, and then it started controlling the mosquitoes in the, in the neighbor's yard as well as the customer's yard, which didn't have many mosquitoes to begin with, and started getting good results on there. So when you're using into care, one of the most important things you wanna remember is, remember that it works in a large area. The bigger the area, the better it's gonna, it's gonna be working for you and taking care of mosquitoes that you can't otherwise do anything about if you don't use into care. Uh, question always comes up, how many stations do I use per yard? Generally about two, sometimes three per yard, depending how big the yard is and how much, how many bushes or things like that. You don't count the house and the, and the, uh, the, the concrete and things like this, but really it's one, it's 10 for 10 per acre, one for every 4,300 square feet, which is about two per house generally. will give you good control on there. Evenly distribute them, spray some out. Remember, take advantage of the fact it has a large control area compared to other. It's it's got triple or quadruple the control area depending on, on into care. It's triple or quadruple control area compared to other traps. So take advantage of that. You can save money by doing that and get better, even get better control. And the, and the, if you get the neighbors to participate, you can put it. You can get down to even maybe one per house, maybe one per yard, or or two and then skip a yard and put two more in the next yard. So if you can get a, a HOA or cul-de-sac or something like that, 
into care is ideal for that situation. Here's just an example of two projects that we did, very large uh, locations, uh, one in Florida and the other one, I believe, is in Brazil. Uh, these are very large where you use, you, we did a large location on there and we were able to use less into care stations, less than 10 per acre, much less than 10% acre, and really get a, and really got good control. So this is a this is a situation again that situ, that into care shines, but it also works extremely well in just a single location or a single household or a single customer in a neighborhood. Um, cul de sacs, small areas, etc. Um, we have uh, literature that you can do. Uh, uh, you know, clo clover leaf uh, selling, et cetera, putting on door handles. There's a lot of customizable stuff on the Into Care site, which I'll give you in a second here, that uh, that will help you uh, um, uh, grow your business. One of the things that a new uh, customer now, some of the people have used Into Care for two or three seasons know this, and uh, but a lot of people have a misconception that Into Care is expensive. It's it's really not. It's probably one of the least expensive things you can use to control mosquito. Once you buy that the uh, the bucket um, the first year, you don't have to buy it for five, six, seven years. The bucket lasts a long time. That's your that's your biggest investment. Most PMPs at the end of the season pick the bucket up, wash, rinse it out, stack it neatly. They stack nicely, and then they put them out the next next year. But you can leave them out season long if you want to, or, or year year long if you want to. So you buy the bucket once. And then after that, you put the sachet in every four to six weeks. And I always recommend six because the sachet works extremely well at six weeks. The only time you want to change the sachet out four weeks is when you have a very, very heavy population. There's a lot of, a lot of pressure from a neighbor or something like that. You may want to change it every four weeks, but our label allows four to six weeks on there. One of the misconceptions, it takes a long time to set into care up. That's not true. It I can set an into care station up in about three minutes. So if I put two per yard, that's six minutes. So each yard, you're doing less than 10 minutes worth of work to set up a station, get it ready, and be on your next call on there. In fact, a lot of PMPs saying by using into care, especially using in care only, and getting in that, or maybe every spraying every other cycle or something like this, they're able to get to get more calls in during that day, more customers during that day. So it takes 10 minutes to set up. Into care is also you use about one third. You use one station per, per 4,300 square feet. Competitive products, you have to use three, sometimes four stations on the same area, three stations on that same area. So into care, you use the bucket, you keep using the bucket, you don't throw it away after you're done, you keep it where, where some you throw, throw away the station and then you have to buy it again. So it gets to be quite a bit more expensive to use it than into care. Because all you're doing with into care when you come back is you keep the bucket. All you're doing is changing out the sachet, and the sachet is very inexpensive to do. So into care compared to spraying and to other 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 systems or other traps is less expensive. And to kind of to start to start wrapping this up, um, into care um, provides a training. What we into care is not sold to retail. We, you're not going to find this like other, other traps on there. You're not going to find this on Amazon or Do My Own or QVC, like the, the Dyna Trap. You're not going to find this on, you know, like we, do, we don't want it to go to, to uh, homeowners. One, they're not going to use it correctly. They're not going to put it in the shade. They're not going to keep the water up. They're not going to, you're a professional. You have it on a cycle. You have it on a system. You're going to be able to take care of that. The other thing thing that, that, that we did not want to see it was a homeowner. You go to a homeowner, talk to about into care, and they and we didn't want them to say, well, I can buy that online. Why am I paying you? Which you can with the other traps. So into care is only sold to professionals, so you're not going to have that issue. It's only sold and serviced by professionals on there. So we, we also, the one thing that we do ask is that if you want to get into care, we ask that you go through a quick training session. We have them every Friday, twice a twice, on every Friday on what, uh, eight o'clock uh, Pacific time and eight o'clock central time. We have it every Friday. If you uh, you go on that, uh, our site, you can get the uh, the information to do this, or you can do the uh, the QR code right now on there. And every Friday you can sit through there and you can ask questions. You can go through the training. It takes about 40 minutes or so to, to do the, the, uh, the session on there. So we highly recommend it. That way your technicians know how to use it, the best way to use it, what to expect, how to handle the sachets, et cetera. 
because this is for professional use only, like I said. And then one thing that I want to wrap up with or get close to wrap up with is we have a lot of selling and, and support information. The videos you can download, um, and I'll talk about how you can brand those videos here in a second. You can download those videos, use them at your leisure or however you want to use those. We have uh, promotional materials that can be downloaded and used. We have deployment tips. We have FAQs that, that can be given to your inside people with questions the homeowners are going to ask and the answers to those questions. So there's a lot of good information that you can get. We've got other videos on there. We've got labels, SDS. Um, we've got scientific background. Um, and then we even have a lot of how-to videos for the professional. And this is not for the homeowner. This is not the homeowner site. This is your site. So we, if you go in there and you can say, how do I set up into care, or how do I secure it, or how do I, how do I do this or that, or what's a, do we have a quick, uh, quick application guide? We've got that on there. So for the size of company, it's a small company that into care is. We have a lot of support information that you can, you can have access to. So please go on this site, www.intocare.org forward slash marketing. That's that, that site up there on the right, www.intocare.org forward slash marketing. Go on that site because the homeowners, they see this on YouTube all the time. We got a lot, there's a lot of video on YouTube on IntuCare now. Homeowners get this into, they, they see this video and then they go to the intocare.org site. We don't tell them about the forward slash marketing part of it. They go to intocare.org, which is on the videos, and then we tell them about IntuCare. And then they ask, the next question they ask is, well, can I, where can I buy it? How can I buy it? And I tell them that you can't buy it, but if you give it, but if you put your uh, uh, email address or you, me, you put your zip code in a PMP finder, you can go ahead and then the PMP finder will go ahead and have a list of all the, the authorized uh, uh, into care um, uh, pest control uh, companies, PMPs, then they can choose on there. So we send them back to you. We get about, in the height of the season, we get about 25 inquiries from homeowners a day last year, probably more this year. We send them right back to you because we want the professionals to handle into care. Not, we don't sell to homeowners. Finally, on there, um, if you if you do want to uh, uh, brand any of the videos that you're on there, you can do that. So you can download it, do it yourself, but we'll do it free for you. So if you go to that, uh, that website down below, the www.intucare.org forward slash customized video forward slash, then give us a couple pieces of information, your logo, a couple pieces of information, phone number, whatever. We'll brand the, the videos for you and send it back to you free. So we do that as a service. We want you to go out there. We want you to use the videos because that main video that you saw earlier is a very, very good video to, 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 to show customers and to, to get, um, you know, get business from. So with that, I'm going to uh, go ahead and cl close. Um, I think I kept uh, under the 40 minutes, which I promised I would do. Again, thank you for your time. Thank you for your interest in Into Care. And um, we have a lot of PMPs use it. We'd love to see you, see you use it, or at least, uh, you know, um, uh, give us a call or, or contact your Viserys rep and learn, learn more about it. Thank you. This is our uh, into care team for the United States. I'm the I'm the guy and the the old guy in the second picture from the left. Um, this is uh, this is who we have. Hey Ted, thanks for presenting such great um, informative information. Um, so with that, we'll go ahead and start um, answering some of the questions that have come in during the, during the presentation. And the first customer is asking. Um, if a customer is using IntuCare for multiple seasons, will mosquitoes develop resistance? No, we have uh, yeah, both pyroproxifen. We've, ne we've never seen resistance to pyroproxifen or to uh, Bavaria bassiana. So we've never we've never seen uh, a resistance happening in any 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 of those uh, and, and all the time we've seen it. So no uh, no no resistance uh, noted. Um, and, and the reason resistance are, are twofold. There's two things that happen to resistance. One they get used to the chemical on there, the chemical itself, and they build up build up a system to where they can detox the chemicals themselves. There's also a low dose resistance issue, and into care take care of that because when she lands on that gauze, she gets a massive dose of both active ingredients, so she's not getting a sublethal dose on there, so resistance all, doesn't happen on there. It's the same thing. Our main product is a system in Africa that 
or, or a, a, a device in Africa, same principle with the, 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 the um, electrostatic gauze. When the, the mosquitoes, the Anopheles mosquitoes in Africa land on it, then they get, she gets a massive dose. So things that we've traditionally, that, that mosquito, that Anopheles mosquitoes have been resistant to, they get a massive dose, so they, they die. And it's, so it's not a, a chemical related, it's a dose related resistance, and you're not gonna see that within two care. So I apologize for the long answer and short question, but it's a great question. Thank you for asking it. Thanks, Ted. Um, the next question is asking, uh, will a sprinkler system watering enter and dilute the actives? The, uh, that's a great question, and, and I didn't have time to cover that today. That's on the stewardship program, and another great question. You can set the into care station out in, the, in, um, in, in a place in, the, in there, and I'll give you two examples. You can have gully washer after gully washer of rain, and the station will funnel the water in, and then funnel the water back out so the floater stays the right size. But you cannot dilute that water enough to, to not work 100, kill 100% of the larvae in there because essentially when you apply it, and you'll see this in the stewardship program, when you put the gauze on there and you put the remaining dust from that packet in there, which you'll see, um, that's 2,000 times more active ingredient than you need to kill 100% of the larvae. So you can't dilute the water. It's impossible to dilute the water enough to do it. In fact, once you pour the water out and you rinse it out, there's enough pyroproxen that went in the plastic that it'll kill, it kill, start killing larvae even if you put fresh water in there. So you can't do that. The other part is the sprinklers. Sprinklers going up and then back down, you know, kind of, kind of vertical sprinklers, no problem whatsoever. But you do want to avoid keeping uh, into care away from a sprinkler that's a strong sprinkler going horizontally, like a like an impact sprinkler or something like that because that'll get water in the, uh, the station. You'll still kill 100% of the larvae in there, but you'll start wetting that gauze and you want the female mosquito to land on that gauze to get a, mat, to get a massive dose of dust on there. So I just advise, why, be mindful of your sprinklers, especially if they're strong horizontal type sprinklers, keep it away from that and you'll never dilute the water enough that it won't kill 100% of the, the, uh, the larvae. Thanks, Ted. Um, the next question is asking, if deploying mid-season, will a liquid knockdown have any interference with into care uh, getting going? With a with a liquid like a, a, a spray, is that was that what the question? Can you say it again? Um, it's she. It's not asking specific. It just says um, if deploying mid-season, will a liquid knockdown? It doesn't say if it's a spray or what formulation. It 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 shouldn't affect. It won't affect the into care at all. Like I said. Uh, if you if it's a spray, it's going to knock down the population. The inoculation will start coming up like like it does between your sprays. It'll start coming up. That's when into care starts taking over. So you you can spray initially and then put into care out, or you can put into care and spray on there. So it works great in combination. If I understand the question correctly, and if I don't didn't understand, please. Uh, the information, email me or, or, or give me a call or, or Viserys rep a call and we'll clarify for you. Thanks, Ted. Um, the next question is asking, how effective is this around a lake environment? Not very. And most of your products are not very effective except for things that you can add to the water. So if you've got mosquitoes coming out of the water, I, and, I, and I've, there's been situations, whether you're using just a standard trap, you know, for three per acre or one that, that, that you do, you know, there's, or, or no, there's three per yard, whatever. It doesn't matter if you've got stuff coming off a lake or a pond into care and those, even in those traps will only con control mosquitoes that are, they're breeding next to this, the, the uh, building. You'll get some that are going into that, but it's not going to take care of the, your main source, which is that lake. You're going to have to either put a good barrier, like a sort of polyzone or or uh, demand or something like that, if you can possibly do that, so they land on it before they get to your customer, or you're gonna have to figure out a way to treat that water with the methoprene, Neutralar, which uh, Viserys has, um, or, or, um, you know, or, or BTI or something like that. So, but the same mosquitoes that come off the lake will also look for spots to lay their eggs in and around the home. So once it comes off the lake and they do go on the into care station, it will kill them, and it'll kill their, their eggs if they lay the eggs in the into care station, whether it be Culex or, which is the ones coming off the lake, or 80s, which are the ones that are breeding around the home. 
And Ted, this may be related to what you just answered, but I'm going to ask it anyway, because the next one's saying, we operate on the coast and have many homes on saltwater canals. How effective can we expect this to be in this particular environment? None of your traps are going to be very effective, including into care in that by you're probably getting mostly salt marsh mosquitoes or mosquitoes uh, that are that are breeding those large bodies of water. So you're going to have to do a barrier. Now, the ones that are breeding next to the house, and you do have those too, no matter where you're at, uh, you need to put a barrier. In that case, you're going to have to do that third, that uh, into care, the high option uh, um, of type control. You're going to have to put a good barrier if you possibly can on there. In most cases, you can do some kind of barrier because you can't treat for water, especially if it's, you know, uh, waterways and things like this. Um, and then the breed, the mosquitoes that are breeding next to the house, which are generally the more pesky of the two anyway, then you're going to be able to, 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 to control those. So, but if you're counting on into care or any trap to control the mosquitoes, whether it's mosquitoes coming off the water, you're probably not going to have much luck. The only exception I could possibly think of is the Dyna trap, which is it's a kind of a standard retail one. We'll start attracting those those mosquitoes as well as all the other mosquitoes um, to that trap, and it's a pre-blood meal type trap, and it may give you some level of control, but probably not much because you've got a lot of stuff coming out of those those waterways. Thanks, Ted. All right, this next question is asking, how do we respond to the risk of uh, the owner's dog knocking over and or drinking the water from the pot? Another good question. We've had, in, 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 we've had two situations. We've had several situations where a dog knocked over the water. It doesn't affect, they can drink the water. Absolutely no effect whatsoever. The water, in fact, when you change the station out, you change the water out, which you'll see in the stewardship program, you can dump the water on there, right on the ground on there, because it's, it's, it's the toxicity to mammals and, and non-targets is so low, dogs included. So we've had dogs knock over, drink the water, that kind of stuff. The two situations where we were concerned about is when twice the dogs, medium-sized, both medium-sized dogs, got in there, somehow got the gauze out, knocked over the water, drank the water, drank some of the water, knocked it over, and ate the gauze. And that was so the active ingredients and the vet called me. I said, the active ingredients aren't gonna be a problem. You know, it's gonna pass through the dog, it's not gonna have any effect on the dog at all. However, that that gauze is gonna to have to pass through the dog. And in both cases it did. So to long again, long answer to short question. Um, there's really no effect on dogs if they get into it or mess with it. All right, lots of questions, Ted. And the next next one's asking or wanting to know if treating a large property, say five acres where people typically are just utilizing one to two acres, would you expect effectively reduced populations in the treated area? Yeah, I would. I, I wouldn't even treat, I wouldn't even probably wouldn't even treat the whole five acres. I would probably treat maybe, and, and, and that's one of those things that we can look at, at Google Earth and say, okay, you've got this situation. I would put the stations as far as this far out. Because remember, they don't fly, you know, this, the 80s especially don't fly more than about 30 to 40 yards. Uh, they will go further for a blood meal, but they don't fly that that far. So in many cases, we can say, okay, you don't have to do the entire five acres. You don't have to go all the way out, but you have to do maybe two thirds of the way and get the area, that treat the area that people are going to be hanging around. Because once they find a blood meal, there's a blood source. And I, this sounds kind of dumb, but mosquitoes aren't stupid. I mean, they are, but they aren't. They're gonna they're gonna hang around where the blood meal is at or where their breeding spots at because they're gonna they're they're not gonna fly very far and that's typically what 80s and that's that's generally what you're going after is gonna be doing so they're not gonna be coming from long distances in most cases so you can get away with putting the stations a little bit closer and still getting control but we have had situations where there was just a lot of beyond that five acres there's a lot more uh, breeding site other house things like this. We've actually had to take it a little further, but again, long answer, short question. Probably not. You're going to have to do maybe half to two thirds of that, that five acres at most. And even then, you may not have to do the full ten, you know, the ten, ten stations on there, because once you get to a bigger area, you can start reducing the amount of stations used per acre. All right, Ted. The next question is referring to the training you spoke of earlier that they can uh, join via the QR code. And this person's just wanting to know, is the training similar to what we're doing right now or is it different? About half the stuff I go through right, right now, this is this is more of a, a abbreviated 
and it didn't go through placing it in the shade. Here's how you want to place, because I talk about in that one, I talk about, okay, you may want to put a station here. It's a little bit more practical. So um, if you're, you're thinking of using IntuCare, this gives you kind of a base of why and how it works. That one will talk about why and how it works, that stewardship, and it'll give you tips on where to place it and what to look for. So I would highly suggest you do that because it talks about putting it in the shade. It talks about uh, you know the effects of the environment. It talks about landscape. If you have landscapers doing landscape work, there's 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 a, a situation there where I discuss. So it gives you very good information that'll probably and in fact it, it will help your uh, success rate if you if you listen to that when you use into care. Thanks, Tad. Um... This question is asking, do you suggest suspending the service during winter or is it advisable to maintain it year round? I, I suggest suspending it. You don't have to do it in the winter. I mean, depending on the part of the country you're in, um, you know, like Florida and South Texas, things like that. A lot of companies are doing year round and just kind of billing on a monthly basis, even though the mosquitoes will drop. But they don't. And then you'll have times you'll have warm periods where they'll come back up so you can do it year round. But probably most of the rest of the country, you could probably suspend the, the service to anywhere from, you know, as little as five months, depending where you're out up north, up to as long as maybe eight months, nine months. Um, and then if you're very far south. So um, I, I would, if I was, unless I was right in the middle of Florida or something like that, I would probably suspend the service for two or three months. Because, and then if you'd leave the stations out, which you can do, you can collect them or you can leave them out. If you happen to have anything, a warm spell where you had a, a, the mosquitoes all of a sudden it warmed up, if they, they lay their eggs in that station, it never becomes a breeding source. It'll always kill that, that larvae in there. All right, Ted, another question here for you is asking, what if there is not a lot of coverage to hide the buckets? We have many homes that are within three feet of each other and there are no trees or bushes. In that case, you're going to have to find some shade, especially depending on the part of the country. If you're in a warmer part of the country, the sun's more intense. Uh, that's there's that's you you really need to have these shaded probably 95% of the time. You have a little bit of morning sun or evening sun, it's not going to hurt it, but you really want to have shade most of the day. So uh, people have come up with some creative ways of making shades, putting it under decks, things like this. But um, you really and that goes for any trap. I mean, you don't want to put a trap out in the middle of the sun because it's going to not going to be attractive to the uh, the mosquito when it gets when it's hot like that especially the day biters uh the 80s mosquitoes um so you, you want to get some shade going um on there some way shape or form all right the next question is asking how does this work in conjunction with scion fog uh it works works pretty well actually scion fog i was I'm pretty impressed with scion fog it has a good, really good long residual just make sure you cover the stations and then with a scion fog, you're, it, I think it has like a 90-day residual or some some very long residual on there. Um, we have a few people using it with the scion on there. Um, I think the cost of scion um, is is a little bit higher because of the residual on there. Um, but we have several people using it. I don't know if you need to use both of them because scion works pretty well at that top point. But in between your sprays, you're still going to get some mosquitoes building up a little bit. And you'll still always get some mosquitoes coming from neighbors, green belts, things like this that'll come over. And that's what IntuCare will take care of. They'll miss that scion barrier, that fog, and they'll come right across the barrier. So that's where IntuCare, and that's why people still use it with scion. Thanks, Ted. Um, this next question is asking, how would you price a residential home that needs three IntuCare stations? That uh, I would I would rather take that offline because I don't want to put price out there that 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 you know I'm saying you should charge this because it's kind of borderline a gray area for me. Um, but if you if you've got three stations out there, we can give you a general idea depending on the part of the country where we've seen pricing, and then that and depending where what your competition level is on there, um, it it can be pretty economic. But it also depends on, you know, are you going out there for ant control, rodent control, something like that, so it's an add-on, or is it a special trip, things like this. Um, the uh, If you really want, want to talk a little bit more about pricing and how to, how to go about that, I'm more than happy to answer it off this call. Um, just give me a, an email. You saw my email address. is ted at intucare.org. 
give me an email address and I'm more than happy to, to go over that with you. The next question is asking, do you recommend a TRAP monitor system also in conjunction with IntuCare? It's not necessary. We've never had, we've never recommended that. If you want to monitor to see what, what the, the best monitoring is, is the customer complaints. And when you walk out there, you're seeing mosquitoes, not just seeing mosquitoes, are they actually biting? Because remember, it's kind of killing them at the same time. So they're not biting, but laying their complement of eggs. Um, but we've never, never uh, recommended a monitor um, on there. The only ones that ever monitor would be uh, mosquito abatement districts. They've done some monitoring just to just to measure and to get a scientific uh, measurement of what's happening out there. And they've, they've proved themselves it works. So that's the only time you'd buy monitor. monitor. All right, Ted, the next question's uh, referencing an issue. It's like, how to keep the funnel lid from easily coming off? I feel it needs more than just a one eighth inch turn to hold on. Uh, I go to accounts and the lid's off because of wild animals, raccoons keep taking it off. Do you have any suggestions for that? Uh, one, uh, really the only thing that I could suggest right now, we're working on an, another way of, of getting that to where it's a little bit more, more than a, a turn. And it's, we're still always gonna have that, that turn that kind of keeps, keeps it on most of the place, but we're looking at other ways of securing the lid on there. It's not a huge problem, but it does happen as you described, especially with raccoons. Um, so there's, there's little notches on the bucket little holes around the rim and if you put right above it if you turn it and put a little little hole on the uh, the uh, the lid on there the little still work fine on the edge of the lid you can put a zip tie on there and that'll keep raccoons and, and things from trying to get that and turning it enough to get that uh, that stage that lid off so that's the only recommendation I've got right now but we are working on it we are working on another way to do that but just just using a little zip tie on there works pretty good and and that's that is one of the, uh, the 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 ways that you see one of the examples of how to secure it. If you go on the intocare.org forward slash marketing, it's a little video on how different ways you may want to think about securing the uh, station. I friend I candidly go uh well that's a different subject. Just go go look at that video and you'll see how that's used. Thanks, Ted. The the next question is asking with three digit summer temperatures, does it reduce the efficacy of the chemical? Not if it's put in the shade. Uh, we've, we haven't had any any uh, issue with the, th the triple digits. Um, you've got two things that are happening. At above 110 degrees, the pyroproxen tends to melt slightly. And this is also on the stewardship program. It tends to melt slightly, so it sticks to the, uh, the gauze, so it doesn't become as accessible to the, the female mosquito on there. But it still kills 100% of what's in the, in the station's legs. She lays in there without question on there. But you want that transfer on there. So above 110 degrees, you could have that happen. But if you put it in the shade and you have a slight cooling effect of the evaporating water, it keeps it, we've had very few situations where the temperature got too hot that in true care doesn't work. We've got stations in, in Arizona, Phoenix, we've got stations in California, in the Central Valley where it gets, gets above that and they're working just fine. As long as you, you kind of put it in the shaded area and you get that little cooling effect from the water. Thanks, Ted. Here's a, the next question is asking, um, what are the best practices for making sure that the pot stays put? We've had a customer whose pots keep disappearing and we suspect that the lawn care company was moving them or throwing them away. Do you have any suggestions for this type of situation? Two. Uh, first one I have is you can make a sticker and say mosquito control product do not touch and some companies have done that. Um, on there, into care, mosquito control product, do not touch, English and Spanish on there. And then the other thing that I like to do is, or if you want to secure them and keep them from being moved, uh, one of the things we talk about stewardship in the program is landscapers, like, like you said, like to move it, mess with it. They'll blow grass and leaves in it, which makes the water really stinky and it makes less effective for, for the 80s mosquitoes. So keep it away from where they'd be blowing their stuff into it. That's one of the things. But the other thing is, is I there we we into uh, excuse me Viserys sells a wire that holds the station. You can pop push the station down on the kind of a specially made wire and it clips it in place. And what you do, you clip that wire in place. Either you can put it right on a uh, a uh, a block that into, uh, that uh, Viserys wears sells also uh, from VM Products. You can put it on that, 
or you can go to Lowe's department, the fencing department, get these nine inch stakes and it goes right through rocks and soil and everything else. You can you can nail that that wire in. Again, it's on the stewardship program. You can nail that wire right into the ground and then the pace slip the bucket over and it clips in place to where they can't move it without pulling the uh, the the the, uh, the stake out or uh, moving uh, moving it physically with that heavy uh, block underneath it that the Sarah sells. Thanks, Ted. Um, this next question is asking, um, we have experienced the bucket drying out before during four weeks during the three digit summer temperatures. We've advised the customer to refill the bucket in between. Do you have any other recommendations? Uh, the only other recommendation I've got for that is, yeah, just, just have the, like you said, have the customer just pour water right on top. Don't even have to move the lid, just pour it right on top, you know, a couple quarts of water and that'll keep it keep it in the, the floater will go come back up it doesn't get wet so on and so forth so that's one way that you just already described but the only other way that, that we're and we're working on a way to to maybe give it fill it with water kind of automatically but that's still in development the only other way outside of that is if you if you bury the the, the station about just a third to a half way up just kind of dig a little hole on it put it in the ground the temperature of the ground is always cooler than the ambient temperature at the three digit level. It's always cooler on there, so it keeps that water cooler and it doesn't dry up as, as quickly. We had a couple of PMPs do this and suggest to us, we didn't know about it. They suggested, say, yeah, it works. I can get through the whole four or five week cycle and without an issue on this once I bury it, you know, a third to halfway way down. So consider burying it because the coolness of the soil will keep it from evaporating. Thanks, Ted. Here's another question. We've just got lots of questions, I, I tell you, they're, and they're great. Um, this one's asking, yeah, what's the best way to keep sprinklers from spraying into the side of the unit and getting the gauze wet? It uh, says when setting in brushy flower bed areas where there is shade, which is a great mosquito placement, but many sprinklers in these areas are hard to deploy to ensure sprinklers water does not spray into side of the unit. Well, the, the only way to do it, there's not a, there's not a good answer for that except for relocating the system, knowing where the sprinklers are at, and relocating the uh, the deal. Like I said, uh, vertical water, no problem. If it's a strong side water, the one thing I can say in consolation to that, which is small consolation, if it gets one side of that gauze wet, if the other side is still dry, the, the female's not going to land on the, the, the wet side. She's still land on that dry side, so you will still get. Uh, on that gauze, unless that gauze is completely wet, you're still going to get some transfer of active ingredients, the pyroproxim and the Bavaria and Bassiana. You'll still get that transfer of degree. It's just it's more effective when it's fully dry. So just try and try and avoid those sprinklers. But we've seen situations where the the the, uh, the gauze was you know, over half wet, and we were still getting good good control in the yard on there just because they were landing on the dry side, still laying their eggs and still getting affected, and there was still You've got billions of particles on that that gauze, so there's still many more particles than you need to control a large population of mosquitoes. But not a great answer for it. Just avoid the sprinkler. All right, folks, we are a little bit beyond the top of the hour. We'll ask a couple more questions, but for those that we aren't able to address, we'll make certain that someone does, in fact, get back in touch with you. Uh, but let's just keep going for a couple more. Um, Ted, this one's asking. What are PCOs using most often to make sure service technicians are keeping the sachets at the temperature needed to stay effective? And is there an expiration date on the sachets? It's a good question. Again, I kept sound like a broken record. It's covered in stewardship, but I'll cover it now. The uh, most people, once you once you receive the sachet, you can keep it in an air-conditioned room for season, all season long, 73 degrees. The misconception is it has to be refrigerated. It doesn't. If you want it to last two years or over two years, put it in the refrigerator. On the service vehicle, what we suggest is that if you're going to take it out just for the day, you can do a light, you know, a very light cooler on there and just kind of put it in the either the cab or or the the back of the pickup, depending where the the uh, the, the regulators want you to have it on there. So you can do that. But if you're going to keep it more than more than that, go ahead and put an ice pack. Or if it's really really hot, that cab can get 130 degrees, 225. Put it put a um, a, um, a an ice pack on it in the cooler. I personally use just the uh, the old Igloo six-pack cooler 
I put them in there. When I take them out, I put an ice pack on there, and for I, for a couple couple of days, two or three days, I'm good to go on there. So just a little six pack cooler would be fine. I've seen one where the lid kind of turns off. You can put them in there, and it keeps them cool. But uh, if you use a cloth one, just be aware that that's good for a few hours in a hot day, especially if you put an ice pack on it. But I'd get the plastic ones and just just kind of mark it in to care, do not touch kind of thing. All right, folks, this will be our last question. Um, and it's asking, is it a good idea or a bad idea to take place or to place an into care on the patio where people are or keep the placement further away? Boy, I tell you, I wish I wish I could have done the stewardship program. It's on there too. I always suggest putting one close to the blood meal. This, like most of the traps out there, are post blood meal traps. It's after a female's taken a blood meal, she's digested it, her eggs are developing. Now she's going to be looking for a place to lay her eggs. That being said, I recommend putting one near the hot spot. That could be a place where they see a lot of mosquitoes in the yard or next to the neighbor's fence if the neighbor's the problem. And I always put one on the patio in a shaded area or under the deck or something like that next to the blood meal. Because if you're going to take a blood meal, and they will, where they come, depending where they're coming from, they're going to take a blood meal, make it convenient for them to, to, to find a, you know, a place to lay her eggs, and she'll rest there. So I put one next to the blood meal. It tends to work pretty well, close to it, you know, not right under them, uh, but close to them and then one in a hot spot on there. And again, all this, we have two or three different training programs. We've got the basic stewardship. We've got advanced into care training, which once we go through that, you really have a good feel of how to use this and get good control. I think that's it. Thanks, Ted. All right, well, I think Andrew had some closing remarks Oh for yeah. us. Yes, thank you, uh, Ted. Thanks so much, man. So many questions. We love this. Uh, folks, um, be advised, you know, we have been, Viserys has been here day one with IntuCare. We've had several seasons with this solution, working closely with you, the PMP, and figuring out ways to come up with an integrated mosquito management program, making IntuCare a central piece of that. Um, we've seen a thing or two. Um, we've helped to build out the stewardship program longer than any other distributor uh, in this market. So uh, please reach out to us. We would love to help you, uh, well, whether you're building it out or uh, just starting or just need to do some refinements. We work very closely with IntuCare for many seasons. 1-800-888-4897 or Viserys.com. Ted, thank you so much. Very informative. And we will follow up with those other questions. Thanks Perfect. again, everybody. Thank you all. Have a great day. Thanks, everyone. And you will receive an email this afternoon with a recording of this webinar. Have a great rest of your day.